Grade 6 Math, number 13.3a, Volume of Prisms. Remember from 4th and 5th grade, a prism is a solid figure that has two same size, same polygon-shaped bases, and other faces that are all rectangles or squares. The two bases are identical. So the bases connect to join the lateral faces, the rectangular or square sides, at the edges. So on this rectangular prism, this is a face, and this side's a face, and there's one behind it, and then the top and the bottom are the bases, base 1 and base 2. On the triangular prism, base 1 and base 2 are the top and the bottom here, and then each one of these rectangles is a lateral side. And where the base joins the lateral side is called an edge, okay? So here's an edge, and here's an edge, and here's an edge. It's where this side meets the top, the base, okay? So volume is the number of cubic units ne needed to fill or occupy a given space without gaps or overlaps. Volume is measured in cubic units, cubic feet, cubic centimeters, cubic inches, cubic meters, okay? Decimeters, millimeters, miles, okay? So for two-dimensional flat surfaces, Remember Bob? He was real flat. When he turned sideways, he was just a line. Well, for two-dimensional flat surfaces, like a piece of paper, we used square units, or units squared, with a tiny little 2 exponent, which meant length times width. It represented the two measures, length and width. For solid figures, which have three dimensions, do you remember Bob's cousin Dave? He did have three dimensions, so when he turned sideways, he was thick, and we could see his full body. So the solid figures which have three dimensions have length, width, and height. So we use a little tiny three exponent to represent length, width, height, those three, okay? And then we have the three measures. We call it cubed or cube units. It's got length, width, and height. It's fat. It's got depth. It's thick, okay? It's not flat like a piece of paper. So how many cubes can fit into this rectangular prism? Well, we see that it's 2 inches across this way and 8 inches long this way and 5 inches tall. So what we do is we figure out how many cubes would fit in one layer, okay? And then we multiply it by how many inches going up, okay? How many layers are we going to need? Well, we know on the first layer we could fit two 1-inch cubes going this way and eight coming down this way. And if we counted them up, we'd have 16 cubes on the first layer. So that's just the first layer. We need five layers, okay? So we have 16 times 5, because each one would be 16, wouldn't it? We multiply 16 times 5, and we get 80, and our total volume is 80 inches cubed. And because we're dealing with inches, and because we're dealing with cubes, we use our little 3 exponent, 80 inches cubed. We know the volume of a rectangular prism is the product of its length, width, and height. Volume equals length, width, height. That's the formula. Since the product of the length and width is the area, right? Length and width is area for like a rectangle. The volume is also the product of the area and one base height. So just like we did here, we did one base height, 2 times 8, okay? And then we're going to go up, all right? This gives us the general formula for the volume of any prism. Prism, The volume equals the base times the height. So if we can find out what the base is, like we did on this one, then we can just multiply it by the height and we're done. With this formula, V equals BH, we can find the volume of a triangular prism. So I want you to remember, in a prism, there are two identical bases, okay? Any two opposite identical sides can be the bases of a prism. Those could be the bases. Those could be the bases. Even these long flat parts could be the bases, as long as they're opposite and identical. Okay? So for a rectangular prism, if it's an equilateral triangle, it would be better to use the top and bottom as the bases, wouldn't it? So the first thing we do is we find the area of one base, okay? One layer, just like we did here. 
So we use the area formula for a triangle. Area equals half times the base times the height, and we got 3 times 4. This looks like it's a right angle here. So we've got half times 12, which is 6. So our first layer, like we did here, comes out to be 6. Now we just need to multiply it by the height. 6 times 2 is 12 units cubed. So we know that this is filled with 12 units cubed if they're all 1 inch cubes, okay? Or 1 centimeter cube, okay? All right. For this one, it looks like it's laying on its side, isn't it? We find the area of one base, and even though it's laying on a rectangular side, we'll use the top and bottom triangles as the bases, okay, as base 1 and base 2. So we do area is half the base times the height, and we can see that the base is 6 and the height is 5. So that's 6 times 5 is 30, so half of 30 is 15 centimeters. See, we're dealing with centimeters now. We use the volume formula, volume equals base times height, because now we've got one layer, all right? In this drawing, we've got one layer that's 15, just like we had one layer was 16 in this one, okay? So, we use the length, the 10 centimeters now, as the height, the h in the formula, because we haven't used it yet, have we? And now if we turn it on its side and use these as the bases, then that is the height, all right? So 15 times 10 means we're going to have 10 layers of the 15, so it's 150 centimeters cubed. That's the total volume of this triangular prism. Now to find the missing dimension when we know the total volume, see the next video, number 13.3b. I didn't have enough room, and I didn't want the video to be too long. So if you know that the total volume is like 254 cubic centimeters, and they've given, you know, some of the measures, and one is missing like an X, I'll show you how to find that in the next video. So come watch it. Okay? It's going to be 13.3b, all right? Because this is 13.3a. I'll see you there. Bye.